ABC. I'm making a, making a regular vinyl updates post. My first one for 2013 and it's already gone horribly wrong. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I wear glasses now. Yeah, but I really don't need them for what I'm about to do, so I'm going to take them off. You don't mind? Um, so I have picked up a few things recently. Um, I, I have a whole backlog of stuff I haven't shown. And I'm just going to worry about that stuff later, if at all. Uh, I might bring it up. In future posts, I might not. I'm just going to try to start anew with some things that I just recently picked up and uh, try to keep these uh, updates to a relatively reasonable amount of time. So stop with the yakking and start with the uh, showing. Um, now, first thing is, what, what's playing right now is um, Andy Partridge from XTC. His uh, album called Takeaway. Uh, it's also called Lure of Salvage, I believe. That's what has two titles. It might have something to do with um, being side one and side two. Takeaway and Lure of, Lure of Salvage. And way back when in the 80s, around 1980, this guy came out. And this is the copy I've always had. And uh, it's on the... Um, It's on the Virgin label. Yeah, one side is Takeaway, one side is Lure of Salvage. So, um, great. Really cool album, really enjoy it. Uh, solo album from 1980. Again, take a good look at this cover. It's kind of important for what I'm about to show that I picked up. See right here. Um, I'm, I've got my camera set up on top of my new 45 boxes, so if you watch the uh, contest entry for Ned's Atomic Dustbin 1, it was the uh, most embarrassing part of your collection, which I just got done doing, which is why I was able to readjust the camera, because I saw that I was like, like this, cut off. So I got to aim the camera down, because it's up higher than it usually is, but anyway, hopefully you can see this. I don't have to redo it. I'm going to redo it anyway. But <laughs> So here's this album that I picked up back in probably around 80, I would say around 83 or 84, I found a copy of it, but it's from 1980. It's a 1980 issue. It's in great shape. And, you know, you see it's printed on white cardboard stock here. And the labels were the Virgin labels, green and red. Well, yesterday, I find myself a copy of the same album, UK Pressing, only it's on this gray, dingy kind of cardboard, you know? It's, it's almost like the cardboard they would have then put the white gloss paper on top of or covered this on top of, I, I don't know it's very strange it's exactly the same it is exactly the same artwork as the one that's on the white it is a it is the UK version as well but as you can see this is on some kind of a dingy gray just like a regular cardboard paper it almost looks like a test press for the uh, album cover I don't know. So I got to do a little digging in, in the uh, archives online for information about this because I was just really surprised. Here's the other interesting part of this is that it's it's in a sleeve that's marked, you know, made in Great Britain on the inner sleeve and everything down here and, and all that. But it's on a plain white label. And it has the same stamps the way the album cover has. And it says 1980 Virgin Records Limited. Then it has a stamp underneath that says V2145A and V2145B on the other side. It's in perfect condition. So I don't really know. All rights reserved, manufacturing owner, performance copyright records. Made in England. Uh, kind of looks like a test pressing, but I don't think so. It could very well just be the very first issue of this was on this blank white label. It doesn't even say Virgin. Well, it does. It said 1980 Virgin Records on the top. But it's not on their standard Virgin Green Red label. So, it's kind of curious. Need to look that up. Um, and figure out who's who and what's what and why it looks so different from the one I originally had. I immediately realized that, hey, this is different than the version I have, so need to look into that. But... 
and uh, it's worth having two copies of it. And being an XTC collector, uh, it's nice to have. So quickly put these away. Oh, it did. It seemed to have a sticker like this one on the front, a round sticker in that same spot. Uh, but someone had peeled it off. Thank you. Wish they hadn't, but you know, whatever. At least they didn't tear the cover. Um, but there's still some stick them on there from the back of the sticker. And I'm a little concerned about using any kind of uh, lighter fluid or anything to get rid of that sticky stuff just because it might get absorbed into the paper, uh, that cardboard, just because of how it's uh, it's not coated or laminated in any way. So. Uh, at the same time, I also picked up, well, uh, if you watch that Grail post that I made a couple of days ago, um, where I got the XTC Homegrown on vinyl finally, and I showed, hey, I got all four of them finally, the Apple Venus Part 1 and 2, and the um, uh, the demos for both of them as well. One big happy family, and then I realized there was one last vinyl uh, item that goes with that series, it goes with that album, that I didn't have. I had it on CD, and I posted a picture of it on, um, on Facebook, um, but I didn't have the vinyl version of it, and the, the box that I showed was the CD version of the box. had both albums, plus both, in, uh, both demo albums, plus a whole bunch of other things, and it was autographed by... I bought it directly from the Idea Records, or from the XTC website, um, and uh, Idea Records at the time. Website, doesn't it, that, which doesn't exist anymore. I think Burning Shed handles all of their um, sales now, so... Uh, Anyway, I had that box, and I showed that, but they also put that box out on vinyl, on a set series of 45s. So this is it. I haven't opened it yet. I just picked it up uh, yesterday, um, sadly, at uh, Easy Street, which is having a sale now because they're, they're closing the shop up the street from me. But um, at least they're not going out of, out of business, and I'm still fingers crossed that Easy Street will find this easy street will find another place to live and uh, you know they've got a couple weeks but anyway uh, you know the, the side effect is they're trying to get rid of their, their all their stock so it's easier to take care of when they move whatever they need to move to the other show that they, the other store that they've got over in West Seattle but um, so they had a sale going on and I had some credit there and uh, I had a loyalty card that I could use so I was able to um, put some money down on this box set, which I used to see on eBay now and then. I don't even see it on eBay anymore, and I don't see it anywhere else listed. I'm sure if I looked harder, I'd find it, but I was very happy to have it. This is called uh, Apple Vinyls. Yes, vinyls with an S. It's right there. I know people get kind of squeamish when they hear the word, the term vinyls, but hey, XTC uses it. I'm fine with that. And it says 13 7 inch singles, compiling the 23 tracks from Apple Venus and Wasp's Wasp Star plus three new songs. I'm trying to think of what the uh, third song is because the, um, the CD box had a digital download code for two songs called Spiral and Say It, uh, and, um, which I downloaded and I got, here's Dexter, how you doing? Um, I don't know what the third, don't know what the third song is. But it says three songs. It's not listed here. Maybe there's a download code in here for an extra song that I don't have. But I think I think I've probably got it anyway. So happy to have this. Looking forward to opening it up, uh, seeing whether or not the feather is in there. There's a there's a feather like on the first album in the CD boxes. But so kind of curious about that. Um 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 um. um, um. Let's see. Oh, it's not bothering with that. That's. Oh, these are kind of mad. Uh, yeah, I will. I will, I won't, I will, I won't, I will, I won't. Um, <laughs> I picked up a nice, uh, the other day, I was at the West Seattle Easy Street store. Picked up a nice copy of Osa Bisa. Um, I can't remember what this is called. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which I believe is their first album. I'm not sure. I have another, I think I have, I think I have their second or third album, but I don't have their first album. This is kind of cool. It's a German pressing. It's in great shape. A nice 
German, very nicely laminated. I mean, beautiful, beautiful cover. That's one thing about Osabisa, you can you can tell their records a mile away because they all have the same look, the same style artwork, and they're really beautiful. Um, so I know it says two fifty there, but it wasn't two fifty for me. A little bit more, not too much more. What's cool though is I've never seen this MCA logo before. It must be the German MCA logo, but it's kind of a cool MCA logo. It must be the same MCA that we're familiar with. It's just got to be, but uh, kind of interesting. And let's see. I'll speed it up here so I can keep with my pledge of having shorter posts. Happy to have that along. Um, picked up a couple of Zappa items as well. I got this at the Easy Street store. Now this is kind of a neat promo. It's um, it's a two-sided promo. One one side is selections from Thingfish. One side is selections from um, Demarus. One of my favorite albums of his and one that left my collection for some reason um, when the silver disc started showing up. So I'm slowly trying to get my way around to finding a copy of Demarus again but until then this is kind of cool. Um, promotion only, not for sale, uh, but uh, it's on Barking Pumpkin Records. For those of you who haven't seen Barking Pumpkin Records label, there it is, in all its beauty, in all its glory. And um, yeah, it's kind of a cool, let's see if there's anything in the dead wax, a few things are scratched out. SPRO, so it's promo, 181 Pumpkin, and promo thing, 181 Pumpkin again. So nothing too special in the, in the dead wax area. thought there might be something there. And uh, so I've never seen this promo before. It's kind of cool. I was happy to, to nab it, especially being a Zap. I've been getting into Zap a lot lately. I used to be in them quite a bit. I always liked them. I saw them back in 80, either 84 or 86. I can't remember which. But um, I still have my ticket stub plus an unused ticket stub from the show because someone who was supposed to go with me didn't show up and then didn't pay for the ticket. And so, anyway, at least I, it's kind of cool to have a, an original, an unused ticket from a show from Frank Zappa, which is great. Uh, let's see, the other item that I have that I picked up recently is a copy of Freak Out. I've got Ruben and the Jets. I kept Ruben and the Jets, and I kept um, We're Only In It For The Money. Uh, just because I don't think those had shown up on CD yet, and I just knew that they were they were, they were originals from the 60s, and I wanted to keep a hold of those, um, so I did, and I'm glad I did. But I'm sort of going back and sort of trying to fill out the rest of at least the earlier catalog. And um, again, found this up at Easy Street. Water damage cover down here. But, uh, you know, overall, you know, it's, it's fine. I can live with the water damage cover. The vinyl itself is in really great shape. There it is on Groove Records. So it's a stereo version. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of a placeholder until I get something else going on. But anyway, so that was nice to pick that up. Like I said, a placeholder, the, the, the cover has got problems, got issues, but the uh, the uh, records, the vinyl, it's got some dust on it, and they're fine otherwise, so it's great. Uh, last thing I want to show is, um, uh, you know, I was going to fill out my Beatles collection here and there, and I already had this um, original We Can Work It Out single. I already had this. Um, but this was in such perfect shape, I had to pick it up. Um, literally, it looks like somebody bought it and put it away and never played it. Even the vinyl is in great shape. Um, but the sleeve is in absolutely perfect condition. And I've got the uh, cut side here showing. There's two different cuts, um, depending on if it was manufactured in the East Coast or West Coast. And I, my brain right now is not remembering if this is an East Coast or a West Coast cut. I'm going to guess that it's a West Coast cut. Um, that's kind of why I have this side out, so I can see what kind of a cut it is and where it's been manufactured, but if I can't remember, uh, there is, however, let me show real quick, um, part 
two, let's put two singles. The albums, okay, so I'll put one. Oh. Hi. So, um, this has still got shrink wrap on it, but it's, I've actually opened it and looked at it, and I just keep the shrink wrap on it to keep, sh shrink wrap on it to keep it uh, looking nice. This is a Bruce Spizer book. Um, it's now out of print, and I think it goes for quantities of money because of that. All of his books seem are, are going for big, big bucks for you know because they're out of print. But they're just such great resources. And this one is about the uh, Beatles on, story on Capitol Records, and this is specifically about the singles. Um, so this is where I'm going to find out what cut this is, <laughs> because what where, if it's the East Coast or West Coast cut? Anyway, um, if you can find these books, if you see these books anywhere at a reasonable price, a used bookstore or something, grab them because when you look at them online, they're very expensive. Some of them are up in the you know three digits, like they're hundred, two hundred dollars. Uh, one even goes first, very first one about VJ Records goes for almost three hundred bucks because they didn't make very many of them, and the way that he made it uh, does not make it easy for him to reproduce it. It wasn't done in a digital format that can be easily. Reproduce, I guess that's what somebody was telling me. That's why that one hasn't been repressed. Um, so, anyway, very, very happy. This is also my favorite Beatles song. We can work it out. So, a combination of those two things being in a pristine condition uh, and being my favorite song of theirs, I had to pick that up. Couldn't leave that behind. So, anyway, um, hey, my first vinyl update for 2013. And I survived, and so did you, hopefully, and it isn't too long. Of course, right when I think that, oh, it hasn't been all that long and it's time to go, it's now been 25 minutes. So, anyway, take care, and I'll be back with another update next time I have a few things to show.